If you have been playing Arena at all this season, chances are there was at least one moment where you died in a way that left your whole team speechless. You probably opened up your death log just to see your entire health bar vaporize in less than a second. Damage in Arena is incredibly high right now, and there are some abilities that are so incredibly powerful that you need to react almost instantly in order to survive. Because damage is so high and so many classes can stack offensive cooldowns, there are some ability combinations that seem outright broken. This guide will cover some of the hardest hitting abilities in the game and what you can do to shut them down. Make sure to stay tuned to the very end because the number one most broken ability might come as a big surprise. Let us know in the comments what ability is the most broken so far in Shadowlands. But before we do get into things, we wanted to let you know that we recently relaunched our World of Warcraft site over at skillcaps.com. It's got a brand new look, and our core system is filled with introductory class guides for every class from some of the best players around including Chanimo, Maro, ZP, and Zuniaki, just to name a few. We've also packed in courses with arena commentaries and user reviews that you can watch to learn how the pros make their decisions in real time and help you all learn from your mistakes together. So, if you're interested in taking your PvP game to the next level and starting your journey to Gladiator, head on over to skillcaps.com slash wow and sign up today. Link is in the description below. And if you're interested in joining our community discord, which is filled with useful resources and quick access guides, we've also got that linked in the description. Starting off our list of the most broken abilities in Shadowlands is the Demon Hunter spell called The Hunt. This is the covenant ability for demon hunters that has a 1.5 minute cooldown and casts a 1 second spell that deals enormous burst damage and applies a powerful dot. Oftentimes, you will see demon hunters use this ability like an execute effect by casting this ability on targets who are already at low HP. This is often paired up with a stun like Chaos Nova, which will prevent all stunned targets from immediately reacting. If the cast cannot be interrupted, it can immediately kill a target if they are below a certain health percentage. The best way to deal with this cooldown is to prevent putting yourself in a position where you will be below 30% HP. If you are taking heavy damage against a Demon Hunter team popping offensive cooldowns, do not wait to use any form of damage mitigation. Your goal should always be staying above 30% HP at all costs. If you let yourself fall lower in HP, you might not have time to react to the combination of stun effects with the hunt. Also, try not to stack up against Demon Hunter teams when they are popping cooldowns. Demon Hunters have AoE damaging effects combined with an AoE stun. Try to keep distance between the healer and the DPS members of your team to make sure that the Demon Hunter can only stun one target with Chaos Nova before the hunt is used. Be aware that this ability does have a 50 yard range and will charge a Demon Hunter to the target it is used on. This makes spread positioning even more important because it can help telegraph who the Demon Hunter wants to hunt. The extra space between you and your partners can sometimes be the difference between life and death. Finally, you can also stop all damage done by the hunt by using any form of CC on the Demon Hunter immediately after the cast finishes. If the Demon Hunter gets stunned during the travel time, the spell will not do any upfront damage. Keep in mind that the damage over time portion of the hunt will still be applied. If getting hunted during your Q session was an unfamiliar way to die in Arena, let's talk about a more familiar way to die with the number 7 most broken Shadowland ability, Elemental Shaman Instant Damage. Elemental Shamans are one of the specs on this list that have a ton of smaller cooldowns, which stack up to a lot of burst damage. Their burst comes primarily through the combination of Primordial Wave, Echoing Shock, Sky Fury Totem, and Stormkeeper, giving them the ability to unleash a combination of instant cast high damage lava bursts followed by two instant cast lightning bolts. Now you might be thinking, how is it possible to counter instant cast damage? Well, fortunately, there are some small things you can do to increase your chances at surviving this damage. First things first, bear in mind that there is one casted spell during this rotation, Stormkeeper. Stormkeeper will give the Elemental Shaman the two instant cast lightning bolts that will be used at the end of the rotation. Because of its 1 minute cooldown, this spell usually signals that high damage is coming. You can use this information to either interrupt the Stormkeeper to delay some of the damage or to communicate to your team that big damage is coming. If you see a Shaman casting Stormkeeper and immediately use Sky Fury, your immediate reaction should be to use a damage mitigation cooldown and try and kill the Sky Fury totem if possible. It doesn't have much health, but good Shamans will place the totem out of line of sight where it is unkillable. You will hear this repeated a lot in this guide, but never be afraid to cooldown trade. If an elemental shaman is willing to invest multiple cooldowns into their burst damage, do not hesitate to coordinate a defensive cooldown with your team as a response. 
you should try and get as close to a 1 is to 1 cooldown trade as possible. Damage mitigation cooldowns can allow your team to survive increased damage due to cooldowns. Once again, the Stormkeeper should communicate to your team that high damage is about to land. Either interrupt the Stormkeeper or be prepared to use a damage mitigation cooldown. Elemental Shamans can also do dangerous damage with Echoing Shock and Lava Burst alone, especially if the Lava Bursts are used against targets with Primordial Wave. If you are a healer and see that Echoing Shock is coming off cooldown, you can counter a lot of its damage by dispelling Flame Shock on the kill target. Lava Burst damage gets dramatically reduced against targets without Flame Shock, and this is especially true if the Flame Shock was applied with Primordial Wave. All in all, Elemental Shaman damage can be scary, but with proper cooldown tracking, it is possible to avoid a lot of its damage. If Elemental Shaman burst at number 7 seemed shocking, prepare to be shocked again by number 6 on our list. Enhancement Shaman Cooldown Stacking If you have been playing Arena since Mists of Pandaria, you probably have nightmares about Enhancement Shaman's popping Ascendance and instantly taking out someone's HP. Because Shadowlands is ironically about death, we should talk about the ways you might find yourself dead against Enhancement Shaman damage. Once again, the damage dealt by this Shaman DPS spec involves stacking a few cooldowns, most notably Ascendance, Doomwinds, Heroism or Bloodlust, and Chain Harvest. Ascendance is probably the scariest cooldown on this list, and it will usually be paired with the rest of these spells. Ascendance is a 3 minute cooldown and transforms the shaman into a nature damage dealing machine, causing an instant burst of nature damage and causing storm strike and auto attacks to have a 30 yard range and bypass armor. This is stacked with dropping a wind fury totem, which will activate doom winds, giving the shaman increased wind fury weapon damage. Finally, heroism or bloodlust will be used with the shamanism PvP talent, and a chain harvest will be cast if the shaman is the Venthyr Covenant. Unlike elemental shamans who telegraph their damage with the cast at the start of their burst rotation, enhancement shamans will often pop all of their damage cooldowns and have instant front-loaded damage. Chain Harvest doesn't even need to be casted in order for huge damage to land. The combination of Ascendance, Doomwinds, and Heroism is scary enough. So how can you deal with it? The best way to negate this damage is to immediately crowd control the Shaman, ideally with a physical stun or disarm effect. One of the reasons warriors are so powerful right now is because they have a lot of tools for dealing for specs like Enhancement Shamans, especially during cooldowns. A warrior can disarm, which will prevent the use of Storm Strike, or stun the Shaman with Storm Bolt, or cast Intimidating Shout to prevent the majority of the damage during Bloodlust. Stunts and disarm effects are often the most reliable, but Enhanced still can do decent damage with instant cast Lightning Bolts during their burst as well. Because of this, even if a stun or disarm is available, it can be worth it to trade a damage mitigating defensive cooldown because it will help reduce overall damage. Kiting the Shaman isn't as reliable, since Ascendance will allow attacks at a 30 yard range. In any case, try and react as quickly as possible by either crowd controlling the Shaman or using an available damage mitigation cooldown. And finally, try and track the cooldown of Bloodlust and Doomwinds, preferably with add-ons. A unique feature of Doomwinds is that it leaves a debuff on the Enhancement Shaman, which can be used to track its cooldown. Once the debuff has expired, the Shaman will have access to the spell again. Tracking cooldowns will allow you to better anticipate setups from the enemy team and is especially important for dealing with the high burst damage caused by Enhancement Shaman cooldowns. Next on our list at number 5 is the Windwalker Monk Storm, Earth, and Fire cooldown. If you've been playing Arena recently, you surely have noticed how much damage Windwalkers can do. In the most recent Race to World's first run, a Windwalker Monk, who is also an Arena World Championship winner, was the top damage for his guild limit complexity on some of their boss attempts. Windwalker Monks deal incredibly high consistent damage, even when no offensive cooldowns are used. So what happens when you give an offensive cooldown to a class that already deals heavy hitting damage? You get even more damage of course. Storm, Earth, and Fire creates clones of the Windwalker Monk that will copy their attacks, giving the monk an overall damage increase. Every monk player also has access to the Invoke Shuen spell, which summons a tiger that deals damage based on how much damage the monk has dealt. On top of that, Windwalker monks usually play the Kyrian Covenant, giving them access to the Weapons of Order Covenant ability. This cooldown gives them increased damage with a mastery boost, and the ability to use Rising Sun Kick more frequently. These three cooldowns cause massive damage increases for the monk, and almost always demand a defensive reaction. If this wasn't enough, monks have an AoE through Leg Sweep, allowing them to get consistent burst setups with their offensive cooldown. When combined with the fact that Storm, Earth, and Fire has two charges, monks are really good at forcing cooldowns over consecutive goats on the enemy team. 
the best way to counter this damage immediately is with a stun effect. But just be careful that the monk is not channeling Fists of Fury before a physical melee stun like Kidney Shot is used. The talent Turbo Fists causes the monk to parry all melee attacks when channeling Fists of Fury. Fortunately, other forms of non-melee crowd control will still work. CCing the monk during cooldowns is incredibly important because Storm, Earth, and Fire and Invoke Xuan scale directly based upon how much damage the monk is able to do. If the monk is CC'd, these cooldowns will effectively deal no damage. Also, try not to stack up on your teammates against any monk team. The AoE stun from Leg Sweep can be absolutely devastating if it hits more than one target and makes it harder to react defensively as a team. Keep in mind that this arm effects do not do anything to stop monk damage. Monk attacks do not even require a melee weapon, so do not waste this arm on monk cooldowns. If no crowd control is available, do not hesitate to trade a damage mitigating defensive cooldown if one is available. This will help deal with the increased damage of the rising sun kicks that will happen during storm, earth, and fire. Kiting the damage is potentially unreliable as monks have very strong mobility and in many cases can quickly reconnect with the kill target. Before we move on to number 4, we've got an ability that wasn't quite broken enough to make into our top 8, but is still one of the strongest abilities in Shadowlands nonetheless, and that's an Arm Warrior Spear of Bastion. This ability is available to warriors with the Carrion Covenant, and creates an AoE circle on the ground that deals damage over time, and tethers targets to the targeted location. There are only a few ways to escape the circle, which we will get to later, and this ability, combined with other damaging abilities of Arms Warriors, can be a devastating combination for the enemy team. In many cases, warriors will combo this spell with Warbreaker, Bladestorm, and Avatar. Many warriors also use the Unhinged Legendary, which will cause their Bladestorm to automatically cast Mortal Strike on two random enemy targets. The combination of these spells is powerful enough on a single target, but when done on multiple targets in a Spear of Bastion with sweeping strikes, it represents a lot of scary AoE damage for the enemy team. We mentioned earlier that there are a few ways to escape the Spear of Bastion AoE tether. Unfortunately, not every class has the tools necessary to remove it, but here are some of the ways you can escape its AoE effect. If you have a Warlock on your team and you get speared near a Demonic Gateway, the port effect from the gate will get you out of the damage. Shadow Priests can also get out of the spear with Greater Fade, and Rogues with Cloak of Shadows. If you are playing the Venthyr Covenant, Door of Shadows will also get you out of the tether. Finally, any Hunter playing with the Craven Stratagem can remove the effect with Feign Death. Another incredibly useful tip against Warriors is to track the cooldown of Warbreaker. This spell is one of the main components of their burst and is usually comboed immediately with other burst cooldowns. If you see a warrior use Warbreaker, anticipate a lot of incoming damage. One immediate way to counter this damage is through this arm. Just be careful not to use this arm into Bladestorm or die by the sword because there will be a chance that it will be parried or immuned. If you don't have a disarm on your team, you should always avoid stacking up against warrior teams if possible. The AoE damage from Bastion Spear, Warbringer, and Bladestorm can be absolutely brutal to heal through, so avoiding AoE setups from the warrior can help mitigate a lot of damage. Finally, if nothing else is available, you should be willing to use a damage mitigating cooldown against Spear of Bastion when it is combined with other warrior cooldowns. Abilities like Power Word Barrier are great for dealing with the damage, especially if it's affecting multiple targets. Next on our list is a new addition to World of Warcraft PvP. Coming in at number 4 is Mind Games, which is available to both Shadow and Discipline Priests. Mind Games is one of the most unique abilities ever in Arena. Put simply, when cast on a target, an amount of damage done by that target will be converted into healing, and the same applies to some healing which is converted into damage. Imagine casting your biggest heal on your partner, only for that heal to be the cause of their death. Mind Games is so powerful right now because of the popularity of hybrid DPS classes like Red Paladins and Enhancement Shamans. These two specs have powerful instant cast healing effects, but if used with mind games, these effects turn against them as damage instead. There is really only one way to consistently counter mind games, which is to dispel it. Because it is a magic debuff, it can be removed by any healer. It can also be reflected by things like Spell Reflection and Nether Ward. This is the best possible reaction, as it will then force the enemy priest to burn a dispel. In any case, it should be dealt with as quickly as possible by removing it with a friendly dispel as soon as the debuff lands. If no dispel is available, the best thing you can do is kite. Avoid doing any damage or healing during its duration, because it will just benefit the enemy team at your expense. If you're a class with healing overtime effects like a Resto Druid, it's even worth it to click off your own hots to prevent mind games damage if no dispel is available. As a healer, you should always track the cooldown of mind games and carefully manage dispels when mind games is available. 
Once mind games has been used, you can continue dispelling as usual. But when it is off CD, be more cautious with your dispels. There are some niche situations where you should try and heal through the mind games. The amount of damage mind games can do is capped, and sometimes it is better to soak the damage dealt by the mind games if no dispel is available. If the target receiving heals from the mind games target is at high enough HP, it is potentially worth it to heal through the mind games. Finally, against teams with a Priest and an Affliction Warlock, it is sometimes better to try and heal through the mind games instead of dispelling it if there is an unstable affliction on the target needing the dispel. Dispelling UA deals a significant amount of hit points, much greater than the damage dealt by mind games. The next three abilities on this list are all incredibly powerful, and it should come at no surprise that a certain combination of balanced druid spells has made its way onto the top three most broken abilities so far in Shadowlands. We're talking of course about Incarnation and Convoke the Spirits. Incarnation or Celestial Alignment gives a flat increase to balanced druid damage and gives them both lunar and solar eclipses, which buffs both their wrath and starfire damage. Usually, balanced druids will combine Incarnation with two or more instant cast star surges, which often crit for over 8k by themselves. Convoke the Spirits is the Night Fae Covenant ability and will cast 16 random balanced druid spells over the course of a 4 second channel. The most significant spells of these random casts are Star Surge and Full Moon. Both of these abilities hit hard on their own, but during Convoke, they will be hitting at the same time as Starfires, Moonfires, and Rats. With good RNG, a single 4 second Convoke can cast a full moon and star surge back to back, causing huge damage over just half of a second. Incarnation and Convoke are good on their own, and absolutely broken when stacked. It should be noted that many Pharaoh Druids also play the Night Fae Covenant, and also use Convoke the Spirits. Instead of dealing damage with spells, their Convoke unleashes a series of melee attacks, including the powerful hitting Ferocious Bite. The damage done by Pharaoh Druids is almost equally scary as Balanced Druids during the Convoke cast. The best way to counter the Convoke is to simply interrupt it. Interrupting the spell immediately will prevent the majority of its damage from happening and will lock the Druid on their nature school, preventing the use of important spells like Cyclone or Barkskin. If no interrupt is available, use any form of crowd control to stop the cast, except Polymorph or Hex because the Druid will probably be in shapeshift form. When fighting balanced druids, especially at higher ratings, try and save some form of instant cast crowd control, specifically to stop the Convoke. Even if this means using a 1 second cheap shot or 2 second fear, stopping the Convoke is the biggest priority. If no stops are available, try and either line of sight the balanced druid or use the strongest damage mitigation cooldowns available. Remember that the Convoke casts are random and on random targets, so your whole team might have to react with their defensive cooldowns. If you have been judging this list so far for its lack of red paladins, judge no more. Coming in at number 2 on our list of most broken Shadowlands abilities are Retribution Paladin cooldowns. Just like Enhancement and Elemental Shamans, Red Paladins often stack multiple powerful cooldowns to unleash almost unstoppable damage. Red Paladins will set up their damage with a combination of Avenging Wrath, Final Reckoning, Seraphim, and the Kyrian ability Divine Toll. The first three of these abilities all provide significant damage increases to the Paladin. Divine Toll combined with the Ringing Clarity Conduit allows the Paladin to then empower their judgment and deal multiple judgment casts, all benefiting from the increased damage of their offensive cooldowns. These stacking damage modifiers give Paladins a massive spike in damage and even help bolster their survivability due to increased Word of Glory healing while Avenging Wrath is active. These cooldowns are often used in conjunction with crowd control effects, shutting down a target from countering the damage. Just like Enhancement Shaman cooldowns, one of the best ways to react to Red Paladin damage is with a physical stun effect like Kidney Shot, or longer duration CC effects like Polymorph, Cyclone, or Fear. This arm will help with some of the damage from abilities like Templar's Verdict, but the Paladin will still be able to get off Judgment casts. Bear in mind that Avenging Wrath can proc with the PvP Talon Aura of Reckoning. This proc creates a shorter duration wings than the longer self-casted Avenging Wrath. That is why it is also important to track cooldowns like Final Reckoning and Seraphim to know when the bigger damage is coming. It can be difficult to CC a Paladin for the entire duration of their cooldowns, so it is often necessary to pop a defensive damage mitigation cooldown as a response. Kiting a Red Paladin is also possible so long as they don't have Divine Steed and Blessing of Freedom to immediately reconnect. In any case, either CCing the Paladin or reducing damage through a damage mitigation cooldown is always a valuable trade into Red Paladin damage. Do not delay your reaction or try and heal through the damage if the Red cannot be CC'd. 
if you have made it this far, you might be wondering what spell could possibly be stronger than Convoke the Spirits with Incarnation or Red Paladin cooldown stacking. One of the things we've talked about a lot in this video is the power of cooldown stacking. Usually, these cooldowns are instant cast but require a few seconds to set up. The number one ability requires virtually no setup and is guaranteed to cause massive instant cast damage. Coming in at the number one most broken ability in Shadowlands is Combustion. Combustion has been a staple for fire mages in Arena for years now, but it has never been as powerful as it is right now. One of the biggest reasons for this is the change to the crit multiplier. Crits now deal 175% of normal damage, up from 150 in previous expansions. Combustion causes every spell to crit, which means the mage is seeing a huge increase to their normal damage. Nearly every mage plays with the Rune of Power Talent, which will auto-activate when Combustion is used. Fire mages will use the combination of Combustion and its instant cast Rune of Power to create a huge spike in their damage output. When this is combined with the Infernal Cascade Conduit, this is a lot of damage. If two Fire Blasts are used during Combustion, the overall damage multiplier will cause a massive spike in DPS. Some Fire Mages are also playing with the Fevered Incantation Legendary Effect, which will give them up to 15% more damage after 5 critical strikes. The damage multipliers of all these effects, combined with the fact that most of their damage is instant cast, makes Combustion the most broken spell so far in Shadowlands. The most optimal way to deal with Combustion is to dispel it. It is a magic buff, so any team with an offensive spell like Purge or Spell Steal can remove it. If removed with Spell Steal, it can be worth it to dispel the buff off of yourself to prevent the Fire Mage from stealing it back. Trying to dispel Combustion can be quite unreliable though, especially since mages will often have multiple buffs on them at one time. Their new legendary Triune Ward can give them 3 extra buffs to burn through before Combustion is dispelled. Because of this, the most consistent way to react to Fire Mage Combustion is to use a powerful damage mitigating cooldown. As a DPS, you should be ready to trinket if necessary in order to use damage mitigating defensives like Cloak of Shadows or Die by the Sword. Healers should also be ready to use their strong defensive cooldowns like Pain Suppression or Iron Bark to mitigate as much damage as possible. You can also try crowd controlling the mage, but that is less reliable as most of the damage will be instant cast, anything will happen very quickly. If you have a knockback effect, you can knock the mage out of the rune of power on the ground, removing its 40% damage increase. Oftentimes, mages will combine combustion with their meteor spell, which deals AoE splash damage. The total damage done by this spell is split among all the targets it hits, so it can be worth it to soak some of the damage done to your partners by standing in a meteor. Meteor is also often pre-cast before combustion is used, meaning that if you see a meteor cast, it can telegraph that huge damage is coming. It is difficult to track the cooldown of Combustion due to the PvP talent called Pyrokinesis. This talent makes the cooldown of Combustion vary based on how many fireballs the mage has casted, so tracking the CD of Combustion can be unreliable. Because of this, it might be more useful to track the cooldown of Meteor to have a better understanding of when damage might be coming. All in all, Combustion is an on-demand, all-in-one offensive cooldown that demands to be respected. Alright guys, hopefully you're now more prepared to handle all of these broken abilities in Shadowlands. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content just like this. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.